uh, today's topic is going to be part of the lectures uh, to address uh, the dental care for medically compromised individuals. Specifically, today we are going to talk about uh, patients suffering from renal conditions, gastrointestinal conditions, endocrine conditions, and patients with cancer. The broader theme is to the work with the team, work with the team. And I also uh, uh, wish to convey my regards from Federation of Special Care Dentistry. Uh, we have running into the second year now. This is specially to address and uh, make a forum for the, for, the, for the dentists and the medical fraternity to, to join hands to serve the needy people who are the patients with the special needs. I welcome all the participants to participants to join this group and uh, share your uh, uh, time, your knowledge and clinical skills to serve the, to the needy. The oral cavity is in the intersection of medicine and the dentistry and the window to the general health of the patient. This is very true as we have many studies which address the relationship between and the systemic disease. And there is a association between the oral condition system and the disease. But the problem is we need not address such issues with the context of the disease, but the good oral health alone justifies preventing the oral disease and maintaining the oral health so that it reduces the burden on the people who are already burdened with the systemic condition. So there is a weak relationship that every oral condition is going to be affecting the systemic disease. But having the good oral hygiene alone is going to be a greatest benefit for these people so that they are not going to be additionally burdened with the dental disease. So with this context, we are going to look at the whole uh, the topic. As a dentist or a dental surgeon, you are going to play a role of either a primary consultant or a secondary consultant. I'm trying to lay down a theme of the team so that we will find the place where we are going to be so that we will play a key role in, 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 in the medical uh, uh, therapist as a dentist and as a, as a cog of the wheel. When you have your patient admitted under you, it will become obviously a primary consultant. And when you refer your patient for any medical uh, doctor, then he is going to be the secondary consultant. That is, a physician can refer a patient to the dentist before they start the medical treatment, or a dentist can refer the patient to a physician before, for the medical assessment before we initiate the dental treatment. So it's all going to start with the prevention, and it is going to start with before the, before the, the, the treatment plan happens. We do, have, we do work under three, two situations. One, either we work in the office space to dental practice or in a hospital where you are part of a team. Our practice broadly divides into a regular dental clinical procedures provided in a dental office for an ambulatory inpatients or outpatients or provision of the care for the bedside patients admitted in a hospital for the medical reasons or an inpatient who is in a hospital for purely dental condition. These are the various conditions under which we work and help the people. Before we go further, there are three essential tools we have to keep in our practices and be familiar with. That is one, the pulse oximeter, uh, the glucometer, and the spignomanometer. That's a BP apparatus. Thanks to COVID, we all know about pulse oximeter now, but the rest of the two should be should be familiar with us in our dental practices. Whether we, we do practice and cater patients with special needs or not, these are three essential tools which should be a great benefit to your practice. So it's, it's important to keep them handy. I'm sure all of us have this. If nobody has it, probably we should procure these three tools which will make our dental practice much more comfortable and safer for for, for people who suffer from systemic conditions. And especially when you, when you are handling uh, a, a stranger as a patient to come to your practices, you should be 
familiar with all these tools with you. We also need to be aware of something called clinical alert monitoring. We always do this when you are in a practice. Only thing is we don't realize that we are, we are observing these things. One is consciousness, that is to, to assess the response to the patient, response of a patient to your verbal command. This way we'll know whether the person is conscious or he has any altered uh, uh, sense of consciousness. We also need to monitor the respiration or rate of respiration. And we also need to know about saturation of the patient. Fortunately for us, we work in an environment surrounded by the mucosa, which is a true replica of the saturation of the body, total mucosa. Apart from that, as we mentioned, the blood pressure monitoring and the pulse monitoring is also an essential part of uh, a general monitoring of the patient. Today, we are going to talk about the, the, the oral health care in medically compromised individuals suffering from renal, gastrointestinal, endocrine conditions, and patients with cancer. Next, we skip to the uh, gastrointestinal diseases and uh, the dental management of a patient uh, with gastrointestinal diseases. The most common gastrointestinal conditions which we come across uh, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is the most common uh, gastrointestinal disease a dentist come across. And across the globe, the incidence of uh, the rest of the gastrointestinal disorders like inflammatory bowel disease differ from country to country. Uh, it is known to be high in a developed countries like UK, US, Japan, and other developed countries. And developing countries like uh, India and uh, Southeastern Southeast Asian countries are known to have a uh, little lesser incidence about uh, inflammatory bowel diseases and irritable bowel syndrome and other uh, uh, conditions uh, we need to be aware of. So the most common uh, uh, gastrointestinal diseases we come across are gastroesophageal reflux disease, which we are very familiar with. The less, to com less common diseases which we see in India are inflammatory bowel diseases or IBD, which is a structural disease, which is a structure, it is to do with the structure of the gastrointestinal tract rather than the function of it. Inflammatory bowel diseases can be a Crohn's disease, which can affect the gastrointestinal tract anywhere between mouth to anus or a few segments of it. Sometimes it could be the generalized gastrointestinal condition or sometimes it can affect any segments between mouth and anus. The ulcerative colitis is the second part of sorry. the ulcerative colitis is the second second uh, condition which we come across, which usually affects uh, the colon and the large intestine. So, which restricts itself to colon and the large intestine. Uh, Irritable bowel syndrome is more of a, a condition which is similar to inflammatory bowel disease, but it is a functional disease rather than a structural disease. The uh, symptoms may be a little similar, but it is more of a functional disease. So irritable bowel disease or irritable bowel syndrome is basically diagnosed by the function rather than investigations, where inflammatory bowel disease is diagnosed by endoscopy and, uh, and uh, biopsies. Celiac disease or coliac disease is another common uh, condition which is seen in people who are immune to, which who are having immune reaction to gluten, which is a common uh, uh, ingredient uh, in, in uh, wheat or any, any uh, product which is made out of uh, wheat. So most of the countries which depend more on the wheat are more prone or they, are, they have more incidences of uh, coliac diseases. And last is uh, gastric, gastric or colorectal cancers. Sorry. Uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD is a defective esophageal peristalsis. If you can see the uh, If you can see the lower esophageal sphincter, which usually is defective, where the sphincter loses its tonicity, which is responsible for the for the for the uh, for the regurgitation or the 
uh, a movement of the gastric contents into the esophagus. So whenever there is a compromise of the leso lower esophageal sphincter, the contents of the stomach or, or, or uh, uh, the gastric contents will re be regurgitated in the esophagus. This is, uh, 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 this is mainly because of a prolonged uh, relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter, which is responsible for control of the uh, reverse uh, movement of the stomach contents in the esophagus. Abnormal gastric emptying is usually the most common uh, uh, reason for this, or increased gastric pressure and, e and esophageal mucosal damage from the ga uh, gastro, sorry, the, the, uh, the most common reason being the abnormal gastric emptying time, or it can be either because of increased gastric pressure and uh, esophagus. The mucosal damage usually happens because of the gastric hydrochloric acid. And when it regurgitates into the mouth, then the enamel and the teeth uh, will get affected because of uh, GERD. Gastrint the next gastrointestinal disease is inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. The specific findings you may find in IBD is diffuse labial and buccal, buccal swellings, which are, which are known to be explained as cobblestone appearance. And you may even see mucosal tags when this cobblestone uh, cobblestone appearance appearing uh, the mucosal swellings do rupture. You find mucosal tags. Deeper linear ulcerations do uh, happen in the mouth. And mucogingivitis and granulomatous colitis are the most common outcomes in the mouth in people suffering from inflammatory bowel disease. You also can find non-specific uh, uh, symptoms such as angular colitis, glossitis, gingival hyperplasia, lichen planus, helitosis, dysphagia, that is altered uh, taste perception, reduced salivation, and lymphadenopathy, secondary fibrosis, and candidiasis. These are the most common findings in the oral cavity resulting from inflammatory bowel disease. Peptic ulcer disease is most common in, uh, in, in countries like Japan and US and some parts of Europe. And uh, symptoms are epigastric pain, vomiting, hematemesis, melania, melina, and anemia. So any anemia without other reasons can be, can be because of peptic ulcer disease, which you need to be uh, uh, investigated for. Uh, the general management of gastrointestinal diseases are based basically on the kind of drugs what we use. Uh, that is, we know that all the NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, uh, drugs are, are strictly uh, used with a lot of precaution. Aspirin can result in, in bleeding of the gastrointestinal tract. So the, the Dentists being the, the clinicians who most commonly use NSAIDs and aspirin because of uh, the pain relief, we need to be carefully used and restricted to, to probably paracetamol uh, to relieve. Uh, though paracetamol is not a strong pain reliever, it is safer than NSAIDs and aspirin. Uh, we also need to consider antihistamine, uh, uh, consider histamine antagonists such as uh, cimetidine, ranitidine, nesetidine, and famitidine. Uh, for uh, 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 when we use uh, 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 certain antibiotics so that they do not have any kind of uh, uh, gastrointestinal disturbances in people with uh, uh, gastrointestinal disorders. Uh, uh, antacids uh, usually are over-the-counter products and when we, when, when we see uh, people using it, we should understand that it will disturb or uh, inhibit or, uh, or alter the um, absorption of metronidazole, ketoconazole, and tetracyclines, and fluoride absorption. So we need to address the issues such as uh, its impact on oral mucosa and dentition, especially GERD, where you see the erosion of the palatal surfaces of anteriors and uh, lingual surfaces of lower anteriors. Uh, which are very typical. Moment they open the mouth, we can easily know that uh, the person might have a GRD. Any little probing, uh, patient might uh, reveal that 
they have a GERD. Sometimes even if the patient is not aware of this condition of GERD, they may usually wake up with sore throat, which is usually an indicator of a GERD, which was not diagnosed uh, before. And uh, they suffer from such a tooth loss, they suffer from severe tooth loss and early involvement of the pulp, depending on the, depending on the proximity of the uh, lesions to the pulp, we may end up using uh, crowning of the teeth or probably considering root canal treatments and crowning them so that uh, the erosive changes do not be painful for these people. Dryness of the mouth further add to the trouble and the halitosis is going to be because of the dry mouth. All these are very common among the patients with uh, GERD. Aptos ulcers, unexplained aptos ulcers uh, 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 are usually an outcome of any kind of gastrointestinal uh, diseases. So dentists being at the receiving end uh, uh, to treat them. So we need to be aware of uh, gastrointestinal conditions and, uh, and uh, advise and treat the patients accordingly. Uh, 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 peptic ulcer disease is another uh, issue which is nowadays is identified with H. pylori bacteria. And uh, plaque being a reservoir of H. pylori, we need to be very meticulous in maintenance of the oral hygiene so that you reduce the, uh, the, the burden of H. pylori in the mouth. And uh, the plaque control should be, a, uh, should be an important aspect in people suffering from peptic ulcer disease uh, so that they don't have any relapse of such a problem because of the oral source of H. pylori uh, in, in people with the peptic ulcer disease. Uh, next, we come across endocrine disorders uh, uh, and the oral care in them. The most common endocrine disorders we come across as a dentist, though there are many endocrine disorders, the most common endocrine disorders which we need to be aware of or we need to be concerned about is number one, uh, pancreatic uh, conditions, thyroid gland conditions, and adrenal gland conditions. The pancreatic uh, condition is is, uh, is uh, any, uh, any compromise of the pancreas, one of the important uh, disease which we, we, we come across is diabetes mellitus, which we are all familiar with. And incidentally, this is one of the most common uh, medical conditions a dentist would uh, come across. And, uh, and uh, the next common condition or next common gland which shows its effects are thyroid gland, either in terms of uh, hyperactivity or hypoactivity, and it can result in hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. The third being adrenal glands and the, the, the compromise of the adrenal glands can, can, can be of adrenal insufficiency or in Cushing's, uh, Cushing's syndrome. Uh, the diabetes mellitus is one of the most common condition in, in dentistry whenever people come with medical conditions. And uh, uh, the countries like uh, uh, India are, are considered capitals of uh, uh, diabetes in the world. Indians and Pakistanis being uh, the most common uh, people to suffer from. Uh, almost 50% of uh, the adult population in, the in, in India and Pakistan are, seems to be suffering from diabetes. Uh, as we know, the diabetes can be either type 1 diabetes or type two diabetes, type one diabetes can be around five to 10% of the population could be affected. Type two diabetes, which most of the people will suffer from, can be affecting about 85 to 90%. It is almost considered lifelong burden and it affects every body part uh, and uh, that includes the mouth also. So people with diabetes come with the multiple conditions which we, we have to keep in mind and, uh, and uh, when, when, when we have to consider dental treatment, we need to know whether they are controlled diabetics or uncontrolled diabetics. The diabetics and the diabetes in them, when it is controlled, it is fine. When it is uncontrolled, when it is fluctuating, things are going to be very difficult for a dentist or a clinician to, 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 to assess their or have a predictable outcome. So in that context, we need to assess the general complaints of the patient to the medical management. So if the patient is not complained for the medical management, then, then the, the, the diabetes can be uncontrolled. Similarly, your dental treatment is not going to be having a great prognosis or, or, or predictable outcome. So we also need to be aware of comorbid conditions such as renal conditions and cardiac conditions, 
when coexist in a diabetic, things are going to be much difficult to handle them. The dry mouth is one of the most common mouth uh, symptom, oral symptom, which we come across in people with the diabetes. And uh, they're more prone for periodontal conditions because of, the, because of the diabetes per se, and because of the diabetes, and because of the infection which is going to be setting in them. Uh, because of the periodontal compromise, people with the diabetes will end up being uh, uh, losing their teeth very early. So any periodontal preventive care will definitely help them in retaining the teeth lifelong, especially in people uh, in India when rice being a staple diet, when people do not have good teeth, they will end up depending on rice. And when the rice is going to be a staple diet for the patient with the people who do not have many teeth, and that is going to be indirectly contributing to the diabetes. So retention of the teeth, saving of the teeth is very important, which starts with uh, periodontal uh, uh, therapy in those, or periodontal prevention of these people. Uh, there are a few issues to be addressed in people with the diabetes. One is uh, to, to whenever people come with diabetes, we also have to know about the fasting glucose level. And we can, we can uh, use your, uh, 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 your resources uh, in, uh, such as glucometer to assess their uh, fasting glucose level. And when it is maintained uh, uh, less than seven millimoles, then it's fine. It is more than that, then it is going to be a, a red flag for you. And we may have to uh, take a physician's consultation and the advice so that the sugars are controlled before you initiate a dental treatment. Your consultation with the primary physician is going to be important uh, uh, aspect here so that uh, the, uh, the patient is going to be treated well, keeping his uh, general condition concerned because the primary consultant is a physician who knows your patient very well. Once you update your plan, they are going to give a more tailored uh, therapy for them in terms of management of uh, uh, diabetes so that our dental uh, treatments are going to be having a better outcome. So, timing of the appointment is very important because early, mo early morning appointments are going to be most convenient for those people because of their inability to, to control their diet and because of the, uh, the medications what we take. The early appointments are going to be very, very convenient for them. So anytime other than the mornings, uh, the blood sugars goes down because they appropriately maintain the sugars, any delay in their intake of the food is going to put them into hypoglycemia. And many times the emergencies in, in diabetic do happen because of hypoglycemia rather than hyperglycemia. The hyperglycemia is going to result in complications over a period of time. But the acute emergencies in a diabetic will, will happen because of the hypoglycemia. So we need to substitute immediately with, uh, with uh, oral uh, glucose or um, uh, intravenous uh, glucose so that the blood sugars are maintained and uh, blood sugar is, uh, is brought back to uh, uh, normals. Uh, they are more prone for infections during periodontal surgeries. They are more prone for infections during maxillofacial surgeries and uh, implant uh, surgeries. So uh, maintenance of the sugars and uh, maintenance of uh, 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 proper infection-free mouth is going to be very, very important. We can even consider using antibiotic prophylaxis and a proper, pro proper antibiotic coverage all through the period so that we can avoid and uh, prevent infections in people uh, with uh, diabetes. When there is a multiple ex when there is going to be multiple extractions or more invasive surgical procedures are going to be planned, they are best planned in a hospital setup rather than than in individual standalone dental practices. Because in 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 uh, individual standalone practices, we may not have that kind of a medical support. Uh, what we get in hospital uh, uh, setup, we can expect a delayed healing of all the procedures, whatever we have done like maxillofacial procedures or periodontal surgeries and implant surgeries, you can expect a delayed healing and uh, infection control during the delayed healing is very, very important. Proactive preventive part is going to be very, very important. They need to be visiting a dentist more frequently so that uh, we maintain the oral hygiene and prevent the disease right in the beginning, especially periodontal and uh, caries infections so that 
they do retain the teeth for a long period of time uh, during the diabetes in the life. Uh, 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 this is uh, uh, this is one tabular uh, 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 table which I have uh, reproduced from Special Gate Dentistry uh, from Crispin Chris Scully. Uh, as such, uh, diabetes do not require any additional care as long as you take precautions. And uh, uh, this table rightly depicts what kind of a care you need to take. If you see the risk assessment need to be considered with the context of the diabetes and hypoglycemia and hypertension and 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 uh, these people are now are more prone for uh, uh, cardiac conditions and hypertension and cardiac arrest and uh, appropriate dental care need to be done and uh, uh, the dental care if needed need to be uh, given in a hospital Gender anesthesia should always be considered uh, with the proper medical advice and they are best done in a hospital, not in, in, in a standalone dental care. Many countries do not do uh, dent dental gender anesthesia in, in dental clinics, but few countries do uh, uh, consider gender anesthesia, do provide the gender anesthesia in dental practices. So when you have a patient with diabetes, they are best treated under general anesthesia in a hospital rather than standalone uh, dental practices. Uh, what is most important in people with diabetes is that uh, uh, their special medical advice, uh, many times uh, a routine medical advice from the, uh, from the clinician is needed, but sometimes they do require a mandatory uh, specific uh, 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 medical advisors such as when they undergo treatments and the general anesthesia. And next is the thyroid diseases. Uh, the most common thyroid conditions are either hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, either, either excess production of uh, the thyroid hormone or uh, reduced production of uh, thyroid hormone. In hypothyroidism, is basically diagnosed with uh, the, the, uh, the level of uh, thyroid stimulating hormone in the body when it is going to be more than 4 to 10, milli, 10 uh, 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 milli, micro units per liter, then it is going to suppress the thyroid production. So patient end up in hypothyroidism. So person with hypothyroidism, which is uh, more common in females than in males, they have uh, salivary gland enlargements. They do have uh, enlargement of the tongue, which is called as microglossia, macroglossia. And they have glossitis, uh, the, the burning sensation of the tongue or uh, very inflamed uh, uh, tongue. They do, they do have mouth breathing because of enlarged size of the tongue and the mouth breathing. They do have dry mouth, dry skin along with the dry mouth. Uh, they, have, they are very intolerant to cold with a little cold also, they feel very uh, shivery. So we need to control the, uh, the uh, air conditioners in the practices so that we maintain the temperature and make the patients very comfortable. They do have raised blood pressure and they do have slow heart rate. And children with uh, early onset diabetes uh, usually show a delayed uh, eruption and uh, adults will have poor periodontal health delayed wound healing, as I was um, mentioning, like in the diabetes, even people with uh, uh, hypothyroidism will have delayed wound healing. When we take dental x-rays, we need to be very careful in protecting the thyroid gland uh, by, by protecting the thyroid gland by using thyroid collars for thyroid production. Because the thyroid gland is already sub-functional, we don't want repeated dental x-rays affecting the uh, 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 elect, uh, affecting the thyroid production further. Uh, hyperthyroidism, where THS, uh, TSH uh, production is, uh, is less than uh, 0.4 uh, micro units per liter, and which, which, uh, which, reduce, which uh, increases the production of uh, thyroid by the uh, hyperthyroid or hyperactivity of the thyroid. Uh, people with uh, hyperthyroidism suffers from uh, tremors, emotional instability. They, they they get very irritable uh, for small reasons. And uh, they do have a lot of uh, intolerance to heat, just opposite to hypothyroidism. They sweat a lot. Uh, they have uh, increased cardiac output. Both the hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism will do affect the cardiac uh, the functioning. 
in hyperthyroidism increases susceptibility to congestive uh, heart failure systolic heart murmurs and uh, hypertension they do have increased increased appetite and weight loss increases susceptibility to caries and periodontal diseases enlargement of extra glandular thyroid tissue mainly in the lateral posterior part of the tongue which again can contribute to uh, macroglossia and uh, protruding tongue and which is going to have uh, a serrated uh, borders of the teeth which is because when they get up they will be uh, 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 pressing the tongue against the, the lingual and palatal parts of parts of the teeth the maxillary and mandibular osteoporosis because of the uh, for the uh, because of the own uh, uh, metabolism uh, uh, compromise in these people uh, they do have accelerated uh, dental eruption opposite to uh, what hypothyroidism has they do have burning mouth syndrome the people who suffering from hyperthyroidism suffer from burning sensations in the mouth uh, which is very common in people suffering from hyperthyroidism the general management of these people suffering from thyroid condition is try to understand the thyroid dysfunction either it is hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism and their symptoms early diagnosis and avoiding the possible dental complications so preventive dental care to identify the early uh, conditions such as periodontal and dental conditions avoid the, uh, dental disease and infection radi appropriate radiation protection by thyroid collar uh, do have uh, things in mind about their cardiac morbidity because they do suffer from uh, hyper uh, hypertension and uh, 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 compromising and the cardiac pumping function uh it has been found that the, the recent exposure to the surgical antiseptic uh, which includes iodine which is in form of povidone can increase the risk of thyroiditis or hyper hypothyroidism with the context of uh, covid uh, dentists during the protocols of uh, covid uh, we have been advising uh, people to rinse their oral mouth i mean oral cavity with povidone more frequently than before which can predispose them for thyroiditis uh, the risk of thyroiditis or hypothyroidism so uh, this need to be uh, kept in mind and avoid uh, povidone iodine uh, in people suffering from uh, thyroiditis excess uh, the excess fluoride in the body can be interfering with the function of thyroid gland so use a fluoride free or uh, a toothpaste and uh, uh, advise paste which do have uh, less fluoride in 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 toothpaste uh, need to be considered for these people next is adrenal related disorders uh, uh, adrenal glands basically uh, produces uh, many important uh, uh, hormones in the body the important being the groups called uh, glu uh, glucocorticoids and uh, mineral cortisols the glucocorticoid can be cortisol and mineral corticosteroid can be aldosterone gluco uh, cortisol basically helps in maintains the hemostasis by regulating many essential functions such as uh, digestion metabolism the uh, uh, many aspects of the immune system blood glucose level and reactions of the body to the stress these are the functions of uh, cortisol whereas mineral mineral corticoids are such as aldosterone regulates the kidney function and helps the control the blood pressure appropriate levels of the blood uh, uh, minerals uh, uh, in the in the body the reduction of the uh, adrenal the reduced reduction of the uh, uh, adrenal I mean, the uh, adrenal hormones result in adrenal insufficiency and increase of the production can result in cushing's uh, syndrome in adrenal insufficiency uh, uh, it's not very uh, common problem uh, compared to other uh, 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 other uh, 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 disorders uh, the primary adrenal insufficiency which is called as uh, uh, addison's disease which is uh, common in see, uh, seen in about 50 people in about a lakh uh, people uh it can be secondary and uh, secondary adrenal insufficiency is is more commoner than the previous one what is about 115 180 150 to 180 in one lakh populations uh acute adrenal insufficiency uh 
uh, uh, can be called as adrenal crisis, whereas uh, chronic adrenal crisis, adrenal insufficiency, can can uh, can be reflected as uh, bronze-colored uh, hyperpigmentation of the skin, mostly on the sun-exposed body surfaces. The exposed body of the sur the exposed surface of the body can turn bronze-colored, and we also can notice them having weakness, fatigue. They get fatigue very easily. They do suffer from hypotension, orthostatic hypotension, loss of extracellular fluid, which is which is going to result in uh, 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 fluid imbalance and compuls compensated loss of uh, plasma and blood uh, and from the blood vessels. An increase in the total body potassium and acidosis. These are the common findings in people with uh, adrenal insufficiency. Whereas in Cushing syndrome, it, which is induced by tumors of the adrenal and pituitary gland and secondary to that uh, administration of the glucocorticoid uh, replacement therapy. Uh, one of the most common uh, 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 condition what we see is the delayed eruption of the teeth in people with uh, Cushing syndrome. The issues to be addressed in adrenal gland disorders are we need to be aware of the signs and symptoms of these people based on whether it is adrenal insufficiency or hyperactivity. Always consider medical, consider, medical consultations before the dental treatments and uh, uh, try not to attempt dental treatments without considering uh, the, uh, the physician's consultation in these people with adrenal gland compromise. Osteoporosis is most commonly seen because of uh, a long term steroid usage, and thus rapid bone loss from the periodontal disease can result in early loss of uh, teeth. They are very susceptible for infections. Antibiotic prophylaxis can be considered when using high doses of uh, steroids, which is sometimes more than 10 milligrams of prednisone, etc. Uh, they are more prone for oral candidiasis. Uh, the one medical emergency which we come across with people with adrenal insufficiency, I mean, adrenal gland disorders or adrenal crisis, uh, uh, you, it, can, it, can, it can precipitate as a stress-related uh, crisis in these people. And this is one of the emergencies which we can see in adrenal gland uh, disorders. And it has to be treated as an emergency by infusing up, about 10 milligrams hydrocortisone intravenously. And this can be a serious emergency in people with adrenal gland disease. 